Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today I'm here at the compass of VCU to spread the message of freedom and to combat the propaganda of the state of the matrix that's pretty much all around us here. And uh, yeah, today should be a successful day. And so please uh, enjoy the content of this video, share, subscribe, and donate if you can, please. Take good care and see you at the victory party. How you doing? Good. Good. <laughs> Hi, you curious? Sure. Yeah. All right, great. Um, all right, I'm going to ask you uh, three simple questions and then uh, very briefly to how describe the hidden violence and the morality of government and then ask what your thoughts and comments are. Okay. Yeah? All right, cool. All right. And so that's the hidden violence behind government and that only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Right, you see the hidden matrix behind what government is, is that they have a monopoly on a lot of services that they force on you and to pay for, that you don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or, or to compete and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you. Right. Right? Uh, so what are your thoughts on that? I agree, but to a certain extent. Okay, I, please, I, please. I think that uh, while government has become larger and a lot less effective over the years, it is important to have a centralized government. Of course, the means in which they enforce their rules and all that is, yes, I agree, a little over the top, especially with you know, SWAT raids on the wrong houses right. that occurs <laughs> more than once. Like, if that happened one time, every 10 years would be like, oh, okay, people make mistakes, I get it. I mean, it's still not great, but mistakes happen. Right. If it happens more than once in a month, you start to think, like, are you serious? But in terms, like, taxes, yes, I agree, taxes suck, but in order to have the things that I enjoy, like, I, I live a pretty great life. I go to college, yeah. I, you know, I vote, I pay taxes, all that, but I am allowed to live this life because I pay these, I mean, I agree morally with what you're saying, but in a practical sense, I need to pay money to live this way. Right, right. Okay, great. And all right, all right, I understand. We, 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 want, we have these needs, and we need, we need these needs to be met. Right. I think that's very important, especially a sense of security, a uh, sense of uh, travel and roads and stuff like that, and then schools and infrastructure. All that's very important. Right. Um, and I agree with you entirely with all that. Uh, this is the stuff I want too. Uh, I guess my problem with, with governments is that they have a monopoly on these services. That's right. Um, so they have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on security, on roads, on schools. They, again, like Netflix, try to raise their prices overnight and people are like, oh, fuck that, cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu. Right. right. <laughs> uh, so what you end up, well, like, imagine like there's a private security company that did what you just said, raided the wrong house, you know, hurt somebody. That company will go bankrupt the next day. That's right. All the other businesses who are providing security say, look, go with us. We promise we'll give you a million dollars. It'll never happen if you go do business with us, right? Right. So you look at the monopoly security that they provide and you see all these SWAT weights happening all over the country, they can go bankrupt, right? right. Uh, oh, maybe he'll have a complaint, you know, and those are accrue, but they can't really fire them because of tenure, because, you know, government-backed uh, regulations. So that's the, that's the problem I see. I still want security, but I want security that's going to be, um, I guess, where I'm in charge. You now, where I can choose is not going to be abusive and harmful to the consumer that's paying your salary. So I take it you're more of a libertarian. Uh, I guess I'm a little step further than that. I'm an anarchist. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So by definition, anarchy just means without political rules. We can have rules. We can have a polycentric legal system. We can have a real free market, you know, instead of the state-controlled market where, I'm sorry, where they have a monopoly on even currency, right? So you can't opt out, cancel, or have the freedom to create a different kind of currency to trade in. Um, so yeah, I, it's um, so it's without political rules. We can have rules. We just don't need strangers politically deciding how best our lives should be run. You know, choices that we can make ourselves. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, so uh, you mentioned libertarian. So what, what do you know about uh, libertarian? Because it's interesting that. Uh, well, I mean, therefore. I, as much as I can say, I don't want to sound like an idiot. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's okay. I'm still learning a lot about this stuff, too. It is It's more of a decentralized government, you know. It's uh, it's social, socially liberal, but economically conservative, but not, not necessarily just economics. But right. You know how Republicans always want less government. Right. And, you know, in, in, in a more broad sense, that's cool, but the way Republicans go about it is completely retarded. It. <laughs> but in the same sense, the two-party system, just branching off here, is completely ridiculous. Right. But 
uh, libertarians, less government, more personal control. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, and, and uh, I guess if, if that could have worked, it would have worked with Ron Paul, right? If it was going to go anywhere, it would have worked, gone somewhere in the past 40 years. But the size of government has only increased. You know, uh, you know, the limited form of government that did exist, that once, the, the once existed here, was called, was it like in 1776? You know, look where we are today. So it's, it's uh, the thing is governments in their nature, they can't be small. They always have to increase. So every year, they'll just increase 1% of tax. One, a little bit more regulations. And then over time, now you have or six, 75% of your income stolen uh, through these regulations makes you poorer. You know, 40 or 50 percent of your income stolen through taxation, you know, accumulating over time. And that's my problem with, with all governments is that it just kind of reboots the matrix again and starts all over again. Uh, and again, the thing is, I, I want real freedom in my lifetime. You know, I don't want the, like these inches for battles for like a scrap of our freedom here and there. And like, you know, if they legalize cannabis tomorrow, so what? You know, how long did that take? Right? For something that's never killed anybody 75 years, that's not a measure of success. So I'm just pretty much trying to let go of the politics, right? For the most part, I see a lot of this divides, divisiveness, and that's kind of what divides us instead of uniting us. It's like, you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, I'm a Libertarian, or for the Green Party, Ralph Nader, or whatnot. And uh, you, you have these uh, political forms of competition against each other, because the thing is you have a preference of the kind of life you like to live in, and that's the kind of direction I, I guess we, we need to go, right? We can have communities of preferences. But of course the government only knows how to force one preference onto everyone, right? right. The preference of the majority of the 51% over the 49%. Instead of having communities of preferences, instead of having like an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not, right? In a uh, polycentric legal system where you agree to the rules that you ascribe to and the consequences, right? Um, so that's that's pretty much uh, I guess I'm out here pretty much talking about this anarchy <laughs> and trying to uh, finally let go. I used to call myself a libertarian anarchist and then kind of had to let go of the political side of it and just had to just go non-political with that aspect of it. So. Uh, but I have some pamphlets if you like. Um, Anarchy pamphlet and peaceful parenting pamphlet. I have a voluntarist pamphlet. Have you heard of the term voluntarist? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I just ran out, so I'll be writing those out soon. And um, we're going to be. Have you heard of agorism? Agorism. Agorism. Counter economics. All right. So it's pretty much like another way to kind of go against the state because of all the regulations and permits and licensing. They're all a form of taxation. You know, unneeded uh, ways that you would kind of increase and in, in trade in if you didn't have those um, those burdens from the state. So it's pretty much trying to uh, to trade without the state intervening in that voluntary interaction. Okay. Uh, so I'll be having a pamphlet coming out soon, but we have everything on our website. Uh, if Is the website listed here? Yes, Liberate RVA. Yeah, you might be familiar with some of the uh, anarchist books too. So, uh, Rothbard, Economy and the State. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Well, do you have uh, any more thoughts or? No, I believe no? Alright, cool. Are you an anarchist? I've, I've gone yeah. to three different meetings. So so I've been some yeah, 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 man. Well, hey, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Cal. Sam. Uh, Sam, pleasure to meet you, Sam. Well. Then all okay. Yeah, I've hit here pretty much. Well, I have this oh, sign. I have uh, asked me how so government I'm is moral. And uh, so I'm not here I, 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 know, I know that. You got it? Yeah. Yeah, all right. I was, I was just curious how I came here. Yeah, all right, cool, man. All right, take care. Right, if they could send Wesley Snipes into a cage for three years for not paying his taxes, they could certainly send anyone else into a cage, right? And so that's the hidden violence behind government, and that only has only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that like us three already share. Right? So what are your thoughts on that? That's very true actually. Yeah. I, I didn't even I wouldn't think about that until someone actually said something about it now. Yeah. That's, and that's the hidden violence behind the matrix. That's the thing that they propagate so hard for people not to see. Uh, so, government has a buy and monopoly and a lot of services that they force on you to pay for and then to accept. All right, so like uh, they have a monopoly on judges, on courts, on security, on roads, on schools. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe. We even have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not going to be abusive and harmful to the consumer, right? So uh, like security, we can still have security in a free and voluntary society. We can still have a plurality of communities of preferences, right? Uh, like a polycentric legal system, but they also have a monopoly on law. So it's kind of hard for them to kind of um, to allow for different preferences. You know, you can have an apartment complex building that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. Yeah. Right? So we can still have all this stuff, but you can't have it through government. Like, it's the majority of the preferences of the 51% force on the 49%.
Yeah. So what are you trying yeah. to do here then? All right, so educate um, people? Uh, educate people, talk about this stuff, talk about the hidden values behind the matrix, behind government, and uh, I guess the solution is turning to our community and turning away from government. Right. Um, so this moral stance that us three already share. So what kind of government do you back? None. We don't need a government. No. We, we can have a free and voluntary society. So what I advocate for, this moral stance that us three already share against using violence to solve problems, is called anarchy. Uh, by definition, it means without political rulers. Like in science, anions and canions, and means without. Archy means rulers, political rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler. Anarchy means without political rulers. Hey, we meet again. <laughs> I love the umbrella. Uh, we can have rules. There's just no need for strangers uh, arbitrarily dictating how best our lives should be, should be lived. Right. right? And that's all the political rulers are. Right? They're allowed to tell you what you can and cannot do with your own body, but you can't tell them the same thing. Right? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So we can still have rules. We can still have this rich and creative um, environment uh, where nothing's kind of in interfering be behind that because no one's going to be violating each other's you know property rights. You know, um, it's like, look, I won't force you to do that which you don't want to do. So we can have communities of preferences. We can have all this kind of rich culture, rich diversity. But um, but with government, they force us against each other through politics. You're a Democrat. You're a Republican, <laughs> and it becomes more political warfare. Yeah. You know. All right. Cool. Uh, well, let me give you pamphlets then. Um, Definitely. So there's an anarchy pamphlet and peaceful parenting pamphlet. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank <laughs> well, you. Well, thanks for coming out. Have a good one. You too. Take good care. Uh, hey. Curious. Yes. That question. Okay. I'm you curious? Okay. All right. Anyone else curious? Uh, yes, but I... All right, if they can send Wesley Snipes into a cage for three years for not paying his taxes, they can certainly send anyone else into a cage. And that's the hidden violence behind government, this organization, and that it only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus a plurality of nonviolent solutions that us three already share. Right? So, what are your thoughts on that? Um, what you call it? But what about... What about like the greater good? All right, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you're talking about they throw people, like you're talking about drug use. You know, what about the what about the harm that pe people both selling and using drugs, like hard drugs, not like cannabis. Right. That it's necessary for the for the government to have some type of provisional like like uh, like a, like what you call it like punishment for people that do certain things that threaten not necessarily the freedoms of themselves, but necessarily the freedoms of others around them. Right. That threaten the safety of others around them. Okay. Shouldn't there be Shouldn't there be a system in place? That well, I mean, we can still have rules. We can still have polycentric law. The government has a monopoly on a lot of services that they force on you to pay for an excess. They have a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on security. They have a monopoly on judges, on courts. They have a monopoly on roads. You can't cancel, unsubscribe, or have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's going to be harmful and abusive to the consumer. So you can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. Right? A lot of drugs are just vices. Something I put into my own body. I'm not hurting anyone else. But the thing is, when you have uh, this, this, this war on drugs, this war on people, uh, so what, what ends up happening, you create this artificial inflated price on drugs, you invite the mafia, you invite drug gang warfare to come in because it makes a lot more sense to get to trade in this area in the market because it's, it just costs, it's, the value is so up high versus if there is no law against it, the value would drop immediately. Like uh, before prohibition, there was, they never had any problems with, yeah. uh, you know, it invited the mafia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so a lot of the violence in this country is because of the war on drugs, it's because of criminal gang activity. Without a war on drugs, there's no gangs. <laughs> there's yeah. nothing to trade it. The valley goes all the way down, and then it's like, what? Well, it's not worth anything. They yeah, it's not, something. yeah, exactly. You look at Portugal, a great example, 10 years ago, they decriminalized all their drugs. Oh, they didn't make it legal or illegal. Decriminalized. And the drug users, all users and all this stuff went down in the first few years. The diseases associated with serine needles went down. Because they realized these people who had an addiction, who had this problem with it, that they needed help, not cages. Right? So we could still find a plurality of non-violent solutions to help each other. You know, and instead of saying a cage is your solution. You know? So this so uh, so this philosophy, I guess this more stance that you and I share against using violence to solving problems is called anarchy. Okay. Like in science, anons and cations, and means without. Archy means rulers, political rulers. Like monarchy means one ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. You know, we can have rules, like you mentioned, we can still have rules. There's just no need for strangers arbitrarily dictating how best your life should be lived. Yeah. Arbitrarily dictating uh, what you can and cannot do with your own body. Whereas you can't tell them the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but yeah, so we can still have rules. You know, if you don't want any, and you don't want alcohol in your house, that's that's your that's your property. You know, you, you establish that rule, right? You can still have this a variety of rich community of preferences. But with government, they only know how to force one preference onto everyone. 
right, the majority preference onto the minority. They don't allow the freedom to have a rich, diverse community of cultures with different preferences, yeah. right? So yeah. that's, that's what we can have. That's what we need to achieve for. But instead, they want to divide us with politics. You're a Democrat, you're a Republican, you know, I'm on this political team, you're on that political team, and it becomes political warfare trying to have achievement of that political power yeah. to force our preference onto each other. That's intense, that's intense. Yeah, man. But thanks for the talk. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me give you uh, some pamphlets real quick, then. You guys go? Thank you. All right, man. You guys take good care. So that's the hidden bias behind government. <laughs> and that this organization that only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of the use of violence to solve any problems versus the morality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Right? So it con con contradicts that which we're already against. Right? Um, so that's. So that's the, that's the matrix, that's the hidden violence behind government. Uh, and that they have also a monopoly on a lot of services that they force you to accept for and to pay for, whether you want it or not. Like they have a, they have a monopoly on, uh, on security, on judges, on courts, on law, they have a monopoly on roads. You can't cancel, unsubscribe, or have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to, to the consumer. Uh, so, that's, so that's the hidden violence behind the matrix. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know, I've just I never thought in that perspective before. You just kind of blew my mind a little bit. I'm just having to and, and take in everything you just told me. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so, so this, this more stance that you and I already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Uh, all right, like in science, anions and canions. An means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler. Anarchy means without political rulers. We can have rules. We can have a polycentric legal system. We can still have security and all this stuff, but provided in a voluntary basis where the consumer is now in charge, right? Like Netflix tried to raise their prices overnight and people are like, oh, forget that, cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu, yeah, right? Yeah. The freedom to select, freedom to have choices, the freedom to, to direct where you want your resources to go to. But government doesn't allow that. But, but in anarchy, it does. So uh, if I'm pretty much out here trying to talk to people, let's turn to our community and turn away from government. Turn away that, that only knows how to solve problems to bond. It's already contradicts our moral values to begin with. Um, well, I'm curious as to how do you go about doing that? Like, if, yeah. All right. Well, All right, yes, yes, okay. So okay. the best way to get the best way to get this, realize you see the matrix for what it is. Um, and realize the change doesn't, doesn't come about through a White House in DC. It doesn't come through countries you've never been to, like Syria. It starts with ourselves at home in our own community. For me, it starts here in Richmond. I love my community, I love, I love my friends that I've met here and my family that I've created here and this is where I guess where I draw my moral eye to, to kind of challenge the state. So it, it starts in our own interpersonal relationships, right? That's where exchange starts. I understand. And encourage them to spread in their own interpersonal relationships. But you look at uh, Detroit that's finally recently filed for bankruptcy. Before that, pretty much every city is going to go through bankruptcy. That's, that's inevitable, inevitable of every city, state, government owned um, of, of a city. As Just it becomes like too unsustainable, it collapses. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot. Sacramento is probably going to be next. Uh, Philadelphia yeah. already billions of dollars in debt. A lot of cities in California already fall for bankruptcy. But so in Detroit last year, 47% of all homeowners just stopped paying their property taxes. Stop. In a city block radius of homes, only one person paid. Because they stopped, because government stopped providing services. Mm -hmm. Because it became too, like calling the cops there now takes over an hour for them to respond. So it, people can achieve that state to stop paying, to stop uh, funding government when they're kind of united. Even though they, they haven't let go of the idea of government, but at least they kind of see the government's not providing the services, so why am I paying? Yeah. So eventually, once we kind of grow, like once we all become abolitionists, eventually we're, that word and meaning kind of goes away. You know, so once we all become anarchists, eventually that too, one day that meaning will go away. But that's kind of where it starts. You know, it eventually kind of grows, and once you see the matrix, you can't plug yourself back into it. Right? Is once that what you're doing to people out here too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have another question. Why yes, is anarchy please. always associated with chaos? Uh, that's a great question. Okay, so it's, it's a lot of great, uh, I guess, great uh, government propaganda to kind of deter you away from anything. Uh, I guess this radical they would consider it. So, uh, I guess government has done a lot of things to kind of turn you away from like without government it would be chaos, mm -hmm. right? So they want to say without your political rulers, uh, you, you won't know how to make choices for yourself. You know, you need us to, to decide choices for you. Um, and that's, so that, of course, that's what they would want to do, right? Yeah. Um, if, you know, if you were king, you would want to tell people, there would be no civilization, hey. <laughs> there would be no civilization without your king. So of course they would want to keep putting in the text and literature out there and say like, it's gonna be chaos. You will not have order. But this is already chaos, yeah. right? You, over, you have over a million Americans uh, rotting in a cell, hurting, you know, behind a cage for, for victimless crimes. You know, this country imprisons, kidnaps and, and cages more people than any other country in the world. 
right? Just because we don't see them don't mean that they're still there, yeah. right? So that that is accumulated over time, right. and so that's I mean, now you're going to have another war with Syria soon. Uh, you know, you have a uh, predator bombing, uh, drone bombing children overseas. Uh, so that's that sounds like a lot like chaos to me. Yeah, it does. Uh, so the thing is, we, but we don't have the freedom to cancel that, right? We don't have the freedom to say I don't want to fund war. I don't want to fund all these extortion um, agencies. Oh, oh, but and that's and that's the direction where we have to go. For me, you can't do it politically. You know, it's like so. What if they legalize cannabis tomorrow? I don't know how long did that take. Yeah. You know, 75 years is not a measure of success to gain one scrap of our freedom, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And politics only just divides us. You know, it all tells you, oh, you're a Republican, you're a Democrat, and it becomes more political warfare trying to uh, grab the seat of power to government. And realizing that's the problem in the first place, you know, to let go of that seat of power and then to turn it back to the individuals. So we can have these rich, uh, creative, fun communities of preferences uh, that can have like an apartment building that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. Right? We can still have rules. We just don't need the government's monopoly on rules. Because that, that's the only way they know how to force preferences onto everyone. The majority of preferences onto the minority of preferences. Right? So either everybody hates cannabis or they do, or they don't. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Instead of saying, well, I don't like it, well, great. This is your property, you don't have to uh, allow it in your property, right? Right. right? So you can have these rich communities, you can have a plurality of rules, and you can have a plurality of security services that you are in charge of, right? Where if a cop or a security business is something bad and uh, raided the wrong house, they go bankrupt the next day. They don't continue uh, going about about the way that the police here do because they have a monopoly on security. They, they, they can't get fired, yeah. right? They can't go bankrupt. Right. They're not really personally held liable. So it's um, that's kind of weird, you know. That you, you won't find that in a free market, you know, like Netflix again. Yeah. Lost so much money the next day overnight. Yeah. So and that's and that's the direction. Like you're actually you're saying it starts with ourselves. Yeah. You know, drawing that moral line, and this is for me. This is for I guess I I fight the matrix. I guess. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Trying to reach out. Do you have like a car? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, a lot of this is also peaceful parenting because it's not just against um, state violence, it has to be against all of it, especially the violence against children. I like, I like that, yeah. Yeah, for me, it's because uh, that's, that's where it starts. You, um, you, you, you do acts of violence with children and that's what teaches them that violence is the way to solve problems when they grow up in, in the world. Oh, yeah. Uh, Thank you so much for the information. Thanks for stopping. Yeah, yeah. We have a website. We, we do like monthly freedom gatherings. Um, pretty much uh, potlucks. Uh, sometimes the fire students will come and uh, do some fire magic and uh, philosophical discussions. Okay. Who, how would I go about finding that? Would I find it? Yeah, website. Yeah. Is it over here? Yeah, yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate no, it. Siasha, by the way. What's your name? Siasha. Siasha, my name is Cal.